Welcome to Primo's. I want to go over a little bit of information on how to condition your pot when you first get it. Uh, this one happens to be a slate. Uh, it's, and, and honestly, on a slate, when you receive them, sometimes there's nothing to do to them at all as far as getting them ready. Take it out calling it first. If you, if you don't get what you're looking for in the sound, uh, then it needs just a little bit of conditioning. We sell an item called a slick stick. A lot of people love them. And the, and the neat thing about the slick stick is it comes with the pad already in it. You'll also usually get one of these with a the call, which is this little square. Um, this is designed to go over the top of your slate and to rough it up and just, you can be aggressive with it. I mean, it doesn't require you to just sit here and lightly sand it. I mean, dig in and sand it. You should see powder coming off of it like that. Uh, work back and forth. You, you, I see people that do circles. I see people do all this stuff. They try to get right in the corners. You don't have to do that. It's just a matter of picking the area where you're going to call. This particular cup, we designed it to call to the middle. So you can make really good sounds in the middle or the outer edge. So in doing so, I'm going to rough up this outer edge, but I never call right here on this ring. And then I'm going to rough up my middle section. And that way I can check it. So I'll check my notes here. I got a good bite. And I always check with like a, just a little cluck or, or just maybe a purr or something like that first, because that's when you know if it's going to slip on you uh, when you're trying to really drag a purr out. I'm looking to see if I slip. If it slips, I'll grab it again and I'll go a little bit more and just kind of dig in with it a little bit more. The other thing, keep in mind, if it is slipping, it may not even be that. It could be your striker. So go back to your striker and look at the end. Whatever you do, don't ever put your thumb or your finger or anything on the tip of the striker. Striker is notorious for getting messed up on the end. And there's a dozen different tricks you can do with it. But this same thing that does that will condition the end of my, my striker without destroying the arch that we put on it. On the slick stick, if you purchase a slick stick, you'll see a little pocket right here that you can put it on. And you can just stick it in the end and just spin it back and forth in that end. Uh, a little bit easier to do. Get rid of the cup, but don't be afraid to just dig into it and run it back and forth and back and forth in that hole. And all you're doing is just cleaning that tip and conditioning it. Once you've done that, go back and check and make sure that your purrs are really there. So my inside and then the outside. So I've got really good sounds on it, really good purrs. I have no problem with the cuts on it. That's all it is to condition it. Slate's super simple. I will tell you that slate's bad about absorbing moisture. And moisture is one of the biggest problems you're going to deal with in slate is it's just, it's adamant. So when you set it on the ground, remember when you're hunting, a lot of times we want to set our slate call right here on the ground. Just be cautious that you're sitting down on a moist ground. It's just drawing in that moisture and it will slip. I hear a lot of people, they'll pick them up and they'll just make a bad note instantly. Strikers especially, don't stick your strikers on the ground. Bad idea. If you put that strike on the ground and it gets moisture and it's going to slip. Uh, if you're not calling on aluminum or something like that, slate's just going to take it away. So a lot of times I like to keep, I'll keep my pad close by and I'll just take my pad every once in a while when I pick it up and I'll just keep it in my finger right there especially on wet, wet, humid days. I don't have to do that on dry climate days, but if it's really wet, I got a good habit of just sticking it under my finger and I'll hold it there. And I'll take and call and every once in a while you'll see me run my finger down here and I'll go back and call. Now I'm just trying not to make bad notes and just avoiding doing that. And so it's super handy advice to be able to do that. If for some reason you do get something in this, 99% alcohol, uh, you can take it in a, in a damp rag and you can just kind of run around on it. Avoid getting enough alcohol that it falls in these grooves. Make sure you rinse out whatever you're using. If you take a piece of cloth, cotton ball, whatever, don't squinch it and make sure it just pours out. Don't do that. Very, very little. You barely want to wet the surface and all you're trying to do that for is to remove any oil that might have got on it from bug spray. There's numerous things that can cause it to get oil on it. If it's just water, don't do anything to it. Just sit back and let it dry out. You're not going to fix it on the hunt. Switch calls, grab another call. Give it time to dry out. Don't stick it in the oven. If you stick this in the oven, it's going to heat up and this glue is going to release and it's going to mess your call up. It's going to melt your finish off the backside. Don't set it on your dashboard in the sun. If you do put it out in the sun, check it every few minutes to see how hot it's getting. I mean, it's okay to put it in the sun. It's not going to hurt it. But if it's sitting there on a 100 degree day and you're sitting there in the sun of a dashboard and a locked up vehicle, you're risk drying out your glue and your glue cracking on you and separating. Other than that, super simple.